welcome to the Banff Springs Hotel. The Fairmont Banff Springs Hotel. So I'm standing outside the statue of William Cornelius Van Horn, who was in 1881 in the Chicago Railway Company out there and moved to Canada to set up the railway between the East and the West. And what a place to bring a resort. Obviously it didn't look like this then. Behind me is the conference center. Uh, there's also a convenience store, a bowling alley, and there used to be a disco in here as well, back when I worked here. And over here we have staff housing. Uh, I was in there briefly, didn't like it, and moved downtown. <laughs> so that was back a few years ago. But staff housing is right across the road from the magnificent Van Springs Hotel. So just crossing the street from staff housing behind me and into the lobby area right here at the Van Springs Hotel. stairs down here will take us to one side of the lobby in fact the concierge is just over here and then beyond that is like a cafe if you like lunch place breakfast place and uh, the other side is the lobby as well just down here this is near concierge concierge is right here and we're gonna up the stairs here to the mezzanine level one. So again here on this mezzanine one level you have a fabulous little museum history of the Bay of Springs Hotel and the area as well. Lots of great old photographs in there and we'll go through there as well. And here's the staircase down to the front desk reception right down here. So through here on mezzanine level one we have a great little heritage hall area, it's called. And in this heritage hall area is a museum. So in this heritage hall area, we have William Van Horn, visionary.
And over here on the right hand side, we have what used to be the uh, front reception area. For most of the 20th century, before it all changed in 2001, it all got gutted and moved from where this area is and where the Rundle Lounge is around us, around the corner here. Uh, it got moved to where it is now, over this way on the hotel. So you can see here with a courtyard type setup, the cars would come around that way and then check-in would be, check-in would be right here. Through these doors. A little bit wet today, but still fabulous. Always fabulous. So this area here is Riverview Lounge and it's made up of limestone called uh, Tyndall. Uh, from Mount Rundle, actually, just just over, and also from the quarries of Manitoba, uh, which a lot of buildings, especially the older buildings in the 19th, sorry, the 20th century, uh, in Canada have this made up of them. So these picturesque, beautiful landscape windows. Uh, these panoramic windows, they are Czechoslovakian windows, which were shipped all the way from Czechoslovakia, which is now, of course, called the Czech Republic. Um, 300 pounds in weight each. So they had to have them specially shipped over in these box crates or something. Um, and we're talking about in the early 1900s for this, after the uh, hotel was rebuilt after the fire in the early 1900s. This fireplace here, right at the end of the Riverview Lounge Hall, or the Riverview Hall, it's actually the largest wood-burning fireplace in the hotel, the Mount Springs Hotel. And it is of Tyndall stone again, and it's got some lovely little carvings of some ram's heads, as you can see. So from the Riverview Lounge, the Riverview Hall area, uh, 
this can take you through now to the Mount Stephen Hall, which is just down here. So this is my most favorite part, Mount Stephen Hall, through here. So Mount Stephen Hall, named after Lord Mount Stephen from Banffshire, Scotland, hence where Banff, the township, gets its name from. Now he was the first president of the Canadian Pacific Railways, and we're talking, I believe it was 1881 to 1888. So this room itself though was renovated in 1928 after the great fire of the Banff Springs Hotel back then, and uh, so a lot of things had to change, but it's all in the Gothic architecture style. You have at the end of these beams, you've got these angels holding crests of the provinces of the time, around the time when this was all rebuilt in late 1920s. And all of the provinces, except of course, those that weren't part of the Confederation then, which is Northwest Territories, the Yukon Territory, Nunavut, and Newfoundland and Labrador. And it also has the crest of the Dominion of Canada, which is just up here. So on this end of Mount Stephen Hall, you've got a pair of squirrels looking over right here in this archway, right here, and right here. Very cute little carvings. Coming through from the Riverview Lounge area, uh, you then reach down here to the staircase, which below the staircase is the dining room, and used to be a library down there as well, uh, but really the staircase was mainly used for um, weddings. The bride would come up the staircase and head to the Cascade Ballroom where a lot of weddings took place and still do. In fact, they're actually setting up for one right now. So we can't go in there right now, but um, I will try and get access to that tomorrow. Uh, next to that is the conservatory as well. But this staircase, um, this being the staircase of the infamous story of the ghost bride. Now, if you want to know more about the ghost bride, please check out my other video about the ghost stories of the Bam Springs Hotel. So this is the staircase here, and um, if we go down it, you'll see it's, um, I mean, it's, it's a beautiful staircase. And um, yeah, it takes us down to the bottom. And like I said, a lot of weddings uh, would use this, and it's right next to the restaurant, so it's really well set up. And here's the ghost bride information right here. And the restaurant through here, which is actually closed at the moment. So the staircase where a lot of the weddings would take place up the top in the Cascade Ballroom. So basically they could have a dining experience here as well, um, right next to this, which leads to the Cascade Ballroom where they could have the wedding or they could have the after wedding. Um, so it's a great setup 
except it was a tragic, of course, event with the ghost bride um, who fell and broke her neck, uh, caught fire because of the candles on the side as well. Uh, and now there's a ghost version of her, apparently, rumor has it. And uh, look at that staircase, it's lovely. Uh, through here, we've got some meeting rooms, this area next to the staircase. And a lot of those obviously used when uh, meetings are popular in the Banff Springs Hotel. And uh, this whole section, in fact, right through here, our meeting rooms. Very exciting. Here. Over here with a power failure. Because I've never been here for the Ghost Bride stairs when it's dark. And there you are. <laughs> so this is pretty rare to get a view of the staircase, which goes up the Cascade Ballroom, which is where the Ghost Bride actually fell to her peril. I mean, she wasn't Ghost Bride then, but she's a Ghost Bride now. Um, and the rumor has it she comes back and uh, haunts it because she fell down and died when she was getting married. Oh, so here I am at the Ghost Bride part and it's dark. I didn't think I would see it in the dark, but I just had a power cut, a power failure. So, you can't see me, but I'm walking down the stairs. I mean, you know, this is the stairs. And uh, will she appear because it's dark? I mean, I don't really want her to appear because it will freak me out. But still, I am a bit freaked out. And now it's just dark here completely. So this is the Ghost Bride without the lights at the stairs. And uh, yeah, we just had a power cut here at the Fairmont Banff Springs Hotel. So uh, hopefully she doesn't appear for me because it will freak me out. I mean, it'd be interesting, but it would freak me out a little bit. That's not her, that's people. <laughs> Anyway, there you are. So, nothing yet. Nothing yet at all. Mount Stephen Hall through to Riverview Lounge. Right next to it, we now have where the old lobby used to be for the hotel, the old front lobby. Um, for pretty much all of the time that I knew it when I worked here way back in the late 90s, just here, is now called the Rundle Lounge. So this is the Rundle Lounge and this is where it used to be, the front desk reception area and then room reservations right behind it, uh, which is where I worked for just a little bit of time in the mid-90s, showing my age. And uh, they regathered the whole thing in, I believe it was 2001, early 2000s anyway, and moved the reception area to where it is now. And this has now become a Rundle Lounge. Um, great happy hour from four till six every day. And I actually love this 
bookshelf looking door they have that opens up and you can actually sit on the other side of it as well it's just part of Rundle Lounge so this is the top part of the Rundle Lounge and up here it's great view from here it's just sitting here casually having a drink in this whole section here um, it's a beautiful spot just to sit here and look over at this not bad at all not bad I say So this here is the Vermilion Room restaurant. Used to be called the Rob Roy Dining Room back when I was here. Back in the 90s. So this is the Vermilion Room, and this is a beer called the Ghost Bride Lager. They've named it. It's a big rock from Alberta. So here we have the entrance to the Cascade Ballroom, um, it, which is Renaissance in its style, Renaissance, Renaissance. And next to it, when you go through, is the um, conservatory, uh, which is just over here, through these doors. Uh, greenhouse, tea room, back in its day. So come with me through to the conservatory. It happens to be open. Which is a shock. And uh, let's have a look at this. Look at the conservatory. Amazing. Look at the view from here. So it was a greenhouse and a tea room uh, back in the day, back in the 1900s. Uh, so I don't know what they're using it for now, but it is attached to the Cascade Ballroom. The Cascade Ballroom is right next door. So look at that. And look at the view we have here. So it's pretty nice. So these are the doors to the uh, Cascade Ballroom right here. But look at this, I mean, you can see that they would have used this entrance here as well, down to the street. So, and what a great way to enter to the Cascade Ballroom is through the conservatory. Look at this amazing, great opportunity we have here to actually view the conservatory. So there you are, and look at the view from, from here as well. It's pretty nice. Um, so the conservatory, it's like Professor Plum with the candlestick in the conservatory. Anyway, not really like that, is it? I should probably leave before I'm kicked out.
So this is the Cascade Bourne. Which is basically where a lot of weddings have taken place over many years. With the history of this hotel. These chandeliers are all imported from Czechoslovakia or the Czech Republic as it is now known. It's a fabulous space. Stephen Hall, we have what is now Grapes Wine Bar, but it used to be the writing room back in the day where all the guests would come and write letters to tell everybody back home what a wonderful time they're having. So overlooking the fabulous Mount Stephen Hall is a Spanish walkway with lots of influence of Spanish architecture uh, and also early English architecture. It's a beautiful spot. And of course the view down on Mount Stephen Hall is pretty special. So at the end of Mount Stephen Hall, you have this fantastic staircase. It's my favorite in the whole place. It's beautiful. Uh, it's made of Tyndall stone from Manitoba. And yeah, this stone is actually used in most of the parliamentary buildings throughout Canada. And uh, it's beautiful. It looks very nice indeed, but I love this staircase. It's fantastic. Light fixtures from Tiffany's purchased in 1928. And on the 11th step is where we find some fossils from many, many years ago that are inside the stone they've, they've put inside there. Right in here. Next to my favorite staircase, the spiral staircase here, is the Alhambra dining room and its Spanish influences based on Christopher Columbus, as you can see here with this fireplace and by the little painting there. Santa Maria above the fireplace just here, Christopher Columbus's ship. So the Alhambra was originally used as a dining room and a ballroom in order to enhance the Spanish motive of the Alhambra dining room, the Canadian Pacific Railroad put in these amazing bronze doors at a cost of $30,000 back in the day in the uh, early 1900s. 
these ones here, are replicas of the Alhambra Palace doors in Granada in Spain. So you can see they're keeping that theme. And through here is a ballroom. It's dark right now. Can't get any lights in there. Um, very expensive doors. But uh, yeah, it's just one of the many rooms here in the Bay of Springs Hotel that are very cool and very different. So right by the spiral staircase and next to Mount Stephen's Hall is a room called the Oak Room, which is styled after 15th century Gothic architecture. However, it is closed, so we can't get in there. But um, yeah, oh well, I've seen it before. It's got beautiful stained glass windows. Um, it is a stunning, stunning location. But it just doesn't seem to be used as much lately, especially this year, 2020. And through here we have the Norway room, just here. Which actually used to be the billiard room back in the old hotel days. And inside it, it looks like they're getting ready for Christmas decorations. They've got gargoyles. Look at these. Very cool. The gargoyles and all the corners look over rooms, contents, but some great old furniture. It's a lovely little room. And uh, through here, another little staircase down to the shops that are down the bottom. Also another way to get through to some of the guest rooms. Then on the way to the other wing. So walking along here is a way to get to the, it's called the gate house now, wing. The gate house wing used to be called the Tudor and the Manor wing. Back when I was working here. Gate house, that's an Italian restaurant there. This is the walkway through to the gatehouse area. So it's called the gatehouse wing of the hotel, which is just down here. And when you're going across this, you're going across the road, and on the other side you've got the convention center. And you've got the old lobby area, which is just through here. And you've got the lounge over there right now. But yeah, over by the conference center, there's also a bowling alley in there, as a little shop. Um, there actually used to be quite a good little disco kind of nightclub called, I think it was called Whiskey Jacks from memory, back when I was here many years ago. Um, that's not there anymore. So yeah, you go down these stairs and you're into the other part of the hotel where you connect through to it anyway, eventually. And there's an Italian restaurant too.
like this part too. Uh, coaches for the groups used to drive in here uh, over in this section for their check-in area and then they walk into this lounge first thing. So um, it's pretty nice. There's a bar up the top there and um, it's got some very interesting scenery. This is a lovely room of death. So the elevators, I've got to talk about the elevators, they're so fantastic in this hotel. So old. But not just the elevators actually, also the mailbox as well. Um, it's one of the only or very few working mailboxes that are chutes that come from each floor. It's very cool. And uh, you can see, this is what it's like inside the elevator. They're very old indeed, that's for sure. So how pretty fun. Part of the hotel and the hallways of the Bam Springs Hotel. Most of the floors in this Fairmont property look like this in the main part of the hotel. So the main building, because there is the attached uh, gatehouse building as well, where there are other rooms, but they're all of different styles to these ones. And uh, when you walk through the hallways, they're all fairly similar on each floor. And you've got second floor up to the ninth floor. You've got this main building set of rooms, but on the ninth floor, you've got a few different ones and different locations of ninth floor rooms, which are on the 10th, 11th and 12th because it's turret rooms. Um, it's like a castle, so it makes sense. This stretch through here, right next to the elevators, basically all face out this side, all face out and have that amazing view uh, through the um, the range of the mountains and over the Bow River as well. And um, the other side looks towards mountains as well, just not of the river also. And the rooms inside are also very comfortable, definitely more on the traditional style uh, in their furnishings, but um, definitely very comfortable. This is what the rooms are like. Really nice. Most of the rooms very similar to this. Got that one. So this floor, the ninth floor, they've all got different sort of size rooms up the top here because it's really eight floors of the main hotel and then this ninth floor, they're all different shapes and sizes really because it's kind of got little turrets of like a castle 
So the little tucked away rooms here and there. But at the end here, the guest rooms through here, I remember through room reservations, which I used to work here like many years ago, many years ago, that uh, there was something very cool about these rooms because the access to them was through this doorway. And then over here, you go up the, uh, a little private um, elevator. So the suites are up here too, quite a few of the suites. So here is suite 919. You actually access via this little elevator, which you can see here. So in this elevator, you can get to suite 919, because otherwise it'd be confusing for people because it's still ninth floor kind of. Or you can go to uh, some of the other rooms as well. But look, you can actually see some scenery as you go up this little tiny little elevator. So the room's up here. So it actually says like floor 9, 10, 11, 12, yet the room's on 10th are also numbered 9, and same with the 11th floor and the 12th floor. So we're at the 12th, we're at the top here. And the suite is in here, and from memory, I think it's a honeymoon suite, could be wrong. Um, has like a spiral staircase through it, it's very cool. But um, as you can see, it's sort of like a turret, there's the access to it. And uh, the other side as well. So it's very cool. See, this is supposed to be floor 11, yet there are rooms that start with nine. And just come off the elevator and you've got a couple here. Very cool. of the hotel fabulous views and the pool the outdoor heated pool I remember being in this and deer would come up from the side of the hills very cool and this is the hotel <laughs> we've got down here as well a gym great fitness center because it's got a fabulous view from there and then uh, the front of the hotel So the fabulous Banff Springs Hotel pool area. I love this area so much, it's so nice. Nice and heated. And even in the winter, it's up to 100 degrees Fahrenheit. You got that amazing view. Love this place. Look at that. And look at that view. So it's pretty special down here. Look at the size of that pool. Great spot indeed.